It's been a great support guys from the videos that I've been doing recently, especially on how to overcome porn addiction. So I'm just going to continue in this video, like I said in the last videos, thanks for the support. If you're new to the YouTube channel, subscribe if you're someone that wants to learn how to get over your fears in your life so you can build confidence and achieve your goals and your dreams and your vision. So in this video, I'm going to continue and I'm going to explain to you today how to handle the mental side of overcoming that negative inner voice because that's the voice that, that usually, that is the voice that gets you to watch porn against your own will or what you, you really want to do and that's the voice that sabotages your relationships. It basically, if you allow it to, it stops you from taking action, it stops you from being social, it stops you from doing things that are good positive things, things that make you feel good about yourself and it tends to make you do negative habits. And if you don't know how to deal with it, then it can obviously continue to bully you, to blackmail you, to shame you, to make you feel frightened, and it's gonna stop you from being happy. So these videos are about standing up to that voice. Now, before I get into it, I wanna be open and honest. I wouldn't feel right if I didn't, that I suffer with this voice as well. I've suffered with it from as young as I can remember. And I'm probably, I'm going to have it for the rest of my voice, rest of my, rest of my life, Freudian slip. And what I realized much later on is every single living, breathing human being, doesn't matter how rich they are or how poor they are or where they've grown up, they have, they have this voice. It is part of being human. It is the bit that a lot of us, we don't want to talk about. I choose to talk about it. I want to be honest and truthful. I spent many years frightened not talking about it because I was afraid that it would attack me more, it would bully me, it would kill me, it would uh, end my life, it would shame me, it would expose me, it would embarrass me, it would hurt me. And after going through so much mental torture and torment and depression and every kind of anxiety you can think of, social phobia, life anxiety, fear of the dentist, um, fear of public speaking, fear of going out leaving my house, fear of shopkeepers, so many fears, you know, I was, fears of living, fears of being alive every single day, the fear of waking up the next day, the fear of, I just frightened to death because I was listening to it for many years and I wasn't speaking up about it and I didn't oppose it, I didn't challenge it for so many years, which is why I struggled in every area of my life. I couldn't get a girlfriend, I couldn't make money, I couldn't, obviously I had friends growing up, luckily, right? But I couldn't build new friendships, I couldn't travel, I couldn't come outside my comfort zone. And I can't speak for everyone. I probably could, but that's another story. <laughs> I struggled mostly on my own. So obviously when I was around people, I'd still be suffering. But I think when you, the great thing about friends and family is it is a distraction, right? It's a healthy distraction a lot of the times. But when I'd be at home on my own or out on my own or watching a movie or just at home, I would be petrified, I would be struggling, it would be talking to me and telling me horrible things that I wasn't good enough, that I was ashamed um, that people would, wouldn't like me or they, would, they wouldn't like, they wouldn't like the fact that I had these voices and they caused me all kinds of um, mental and emotional problems and just frightened me to death and stopped me from, they stopped me from doing things that I, I could do, that I didn't know I could do. So they caused me so much confusion and, and panic and they overwhelmed me and they, they gave me such low self-esteem because I didn't know how to oppose them. Um, they convinced me that they were right, I was wrong. And if they said negative things about me, this voice or these voices that I would suffer since I was a kid, it was almost like being bullied by someone who's telling you what to do and telling you that you can't oppose them because if you do, you're wrong. So I had to get to a point of wanting to end my life, which I was not comfortable about thinking about feeling. I never did, thank God, because I listened to a motivational talk from Les Brown that changed my life and I did a lot of praying. I'm, I'm a Christian, so I did do a lot of praying. And I, I am lucky that I did have um, a good relationship with my mum, that I could go to my mum and I could talk to her and she was brilliant. And I could talk to my dad as well. Um, even though I felt a bit more comfortable being more vulnerable with my mum, when it got bad, actually, I would go to my dad. Bit of a contradiction, what I said, but th this is how I felt, this is true. And they, they were brilliant, but I didn't want to keep stressing them out when I got to a certain age. I didn't. My mum and dad got their own stresses, and 
I would go to my nan, she was a lifesaver. But after a while, I didn't want to drain my family and I started bottling up more of what was going on in my head. Most of what was going on in my head was was um, threats that I was um, not good enough and I could never change that and that frightened me and made me depressed because I knew deep down, I had a, I had an inkling, that's, I don't believe that, it can't be right. I, I had an intuitive feeling that I can't, this is, can't be what I'm destined to live. Everyday suffering, is that what living's about? I wouldn't wish this on anyone, even at that time, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Um, it's just a torturous thing for a human being to go through. It's, it's unbearable at certain points. It was worse than being punched in the face and kicked, um, which I experienced growing up. It was such torture and, and I had enough of it. So my first breakthrough and realization with getting out of this, funny enough, we're talking about porn addiction. I had a porn addiction at the time. Um, it's only now looking back that I didn't even realize it. Like a lot of addictions, I wasn't fully aware of it. I had a porn addiction. Um, and I, I, I had an addiction with escorts as well for a while. I didn't tell anyone about that. Um, so paying um, women to make love, I had an addiction with that. I was um, working as a postman doing that. And the reason I did that was I, I wanted some relief from these voices and the depression. And I didn't know how to ask. I was too scared to ask for help. I felt too embarrassed and ashamed. So I wouldn't have done those negative things with porn and paying escorts if I would have had the help and the tools that I've later got now and I don't do those things anymore. But by the way, I'm not judging anyone who does that because I couldn't judge anyone if they were doing that. I want to help them if I can by telling the truth and sharing the tools that I, learned, I developed. I developed these tools. Um, I don't even know if it's by accident. It doesn't really make a difference. I developed them by being so brave and standing up to what was going on in my head. So the real practice is to be aware, to have awareness. And I know that sounds obvious because people will go, well, of course I'm aware of it, Johnny. I, I know you're aware of it, but I mean real awareness. Awareness is where you can stop for a second, not in a crazy way. <laughs> I don't know why I've got, see another crazy thought, right? Making, just saying I'm crazy, I'm not crazy. You can actually stop for a second and go, hang on a minute. Let me be aware of the thoughts I'm having. Are these thoughts true? Okay, I'm not good enough. I can't ever get a relationship. I, I can't be happy. I can't be honest with people. I, I can't be forgiven for my mistakes or I can't forgive someone or I'm a terrible person. Are these things really true? And for most part, they're not true. But they will only be proven untrue until you disprove them. And it takes so much courage to have awareness, to be aware of your own negative and how they're messing you up. You know, these voices are actually causing me to not make friends. These voices are causing me to, to be depressed and to be suicidal. These voices are causing me to close down and not have a relationship with my family who I love because I'm scared of be, being vulnerable. They're causing me to not have employment. They're causing me to maybe act out in ways in which are not appropriate. Maybe I'm acting in ways towards others that I, I, it's not me. So they're causing me all types of problems in my life, mental, emotional, it might be causing me to not be able to go out and make money and make a living. It might be causing me to not actually show my kind side to people. So that's the awareness. And then it's like, okay, I'm aware of the um, negative consequences that these voices are causing me in my life or these thoughts or this anxiety or depression. Now I want to challenge it. I want to oppose it. I want to stand up to these bullying inner thoughts. The same way when I was younger, girls and guys, I got bullied for a long time and I had enough of it. I started standing up for myself and I put a stop to all of it. And you know, my dad taught me some basics of self-defense, of boxing, and then I just started to stand up and the bullies got scared and they stopped bullying me. Um, so in the same way, it's courage. That's what I've been teaching for many years. Sometimes I forget, because it sounds, this stuff sounds a lot. When you get down to the actual practicalities, it's straightforward, but it's difficult for a lot of people. It's still difficult for me at times, which is why it's very rewarding. Making these videos um, is, is difficult um, at times, but if we don't go through that difficulty, then you're not gonna, you know, there's not gonna be light at the end of the tunnel, so everyone can, can succeed. 
So I wanted to educate you on these and give you examples. So, okay, so what happens when you oppose these voices? Well, they try and stop you, they try and threaten you. That's what they do to me, it's a continuation. But when you face them and you say, okay, do your worst, I'm not frightened to be frightened of you, but I'm gonna stand up to you and I'm not believing that I'm not good enough to get a girlfriend. I know I'm a good person. Then you go out, you start dating, You all of you will get a girlfriend eventually. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, you're gonna probably go through some challenges and heartache, that's life, but you will meet someone, it will work out and you'll be so happy. Once you get proof that these voices are lying and you get concrete proof in any way in your life in which it's telling you that you can't, because it always tells you that you can't get something, you can't be somebody, so it will tell you that you, I remember for a while telling me that I, I would never quit my escort addiction, which I was deeply ashamed about, um, but I did beat it, I quit it, and I never looked back, and then I got a girlfriend, and I turned my life around, it told me that I would never, um, it told me that I'd never be able to do public speaking, and it told me that if I tried to do that, I would be publicly humiliated and shamed, and I would disgrace myself, my family, everyone. I proved it wrong. I did loads of public talks. I inspired people. I was brilliant. So I know everyone can do this. And it's so difficult for a lot of men today. Funny enough, whenever I'm with guys or friends one-on-one, -on -one, they'll feel comfortable with me, which I'm grateful for, or other friends, or they'll open up. But it's hard online. When you're online, it can feel disconnected. You can have a fear. So you have to face your fear of opening up. And uh, I have to realize everyone that, you know, people can't really judge you for this because they're going through it. And a lot of people are not honest. So there's nothing to be ashamed about for having these voices because some of the most successful people struggle with mental illness. I'm not saying everyone has um, diagnosed mental illness, but every single human being has an ego and every single person has an ego voice. And that is the voice, that negative voice is what either drives people into despair in their life and, and unhappiness or it drives them into peace and happiness and success so it is true it's either the voice is either going to control you and bully you and make you frightened and limited or if you get control over it basically like controlling your inner child psychologists would say and parenting your inner child and loving it but not letting it step out of line then then you can live your dreams but obviously, this is an uncomfortable practice to say the least, but that shouldn't put people off. It should never put me off because you will value, you'll become a better person. You'll become stronger because you put yourself through uncomfortable things. So doing this video is very well uncomfortable for me. This is like a video that I'd much rather avoid talking about, I have to talk about this stuff that I did in the past and just to oppose my own voices. But if I don't talk about it, I'm going to be lying to myself, which I don't enjoy, and I value myself. I'll be, uh, it's not so much I'm lying to everyone else, but I'm not helping them. I'm not having the guts to sacrifice my own comfort and my own story and my own vulnerabilities and my successes and strengths in order to help other people to be, to change their life, potentially save people's lives. So I'm willing to go through that. I'm willing to go through judgment or people knowing things about me that they didn't know, that I could choose not to share. I'm willing to do it because basically that's kind of what I'm asking you guys to voluntarily do. I can't force you. I'm asking you to open up so you can, you can change, you can improve. So I always believe in the power of honest conversation, confession, because it always worked, it's always worked for me and that always lies, it always threatens you and says you can't say that, if you say that X, Y, Z will happen, but it doesn't and you'll handle it, whatever the backlash, I've handled it before there's no criticism that any human being could ever say to me that I haven't already heard my own negative inner critic tell me my inner critic says awful things to me, but I choose not to believe it because I, I know I'm not what it tells me I am because I've proved it thousands and thousands of times by taking action and facing fears in, in my life and um, trying the best I can to be an honest person and having the courage when I have been dishonest and made mistakes. So all these things I'm saying, they, they all connect with becoming fearless, which is um, about what we're doing today. We're admitting our fears, we're admitting things that we're scared to admit 
we are not um, blaming anyone, we're taking responsibility, and then we're disproving them by facing our fears on a practical level. So for years we've always said, well, you, you can't go and meet people because you've got too bad social anxiety, they're gonna judge you and you're not gonna be able to communicate with people, it's not gonna be pleasant. I challenged it and I had so many good experiences and I was excellent at communicating with people and people were nice. I did loads of events and I went to other people's events. I would never be doing these videos now because the voices years ago would say I wasn't good enough to do YouTube videos and I didn't have a right to do it and it was what I was doing was wrong and you just couldn't, you can't speak. I've done thousands of videos, I've gone around the world. So there are times where emotionally it's, it's excruciatingly painful for me to have to face this stuff and process it and overcome it. But I wouldn't have it any other way because I haven't, there isn't another way so far. Show me, there's no quick fix with this stuff. But it's doing this hard work and going through the pain that gets you to that great, all those great feelings that we want, happiness, being in love, you know, being able to achieve something in your life. And that's why loads of my videos have gone viral. Because I've got the guts to be honest and tell the truth um, with what would help people and with things that I have been through and, and felt. So for guys, they've got to get in touch with their emotions and, uh, and do this in a positive way and, and gradually you have to practice this. You can't do everything in one go, it's too overwhelming. So I gradually built up the tolerance and the confidence to go into fearful situations and to gain, to gain that discipline so that you can override the porn addiction. And I've said a lot of my videos, I think, I know for me, right, for a lot of guys, if they were to get a girlfriend, they wouldn't watch that stuff, they wouldn't need to, they'd have a real intimate relationship. But a lot of them, a lot of you at the moment, you don't believe you're good enough. I'm here to tell you, you definitely are good enough, but you've got to, you've got to put the work in, you've got to develop yourself and disprove your own voices and then learn to manage it, because it's a battle for life. A lot of people don't know this, or maybe they do know it, they don't want to, they don't want to admit it, even when you become successful, you still deal with them. I, I deal with these. Sometimes they come back worse. They threaten, they shout at me, they curse at me um, for disobeying them and going out and doing positive things. So I, I don't want to make it sound dramatic, but it's the truth. And what are we supposed to do? Am I supposed to not say it because it makes someone uncomfortable? If they get uncomfortable, then that's, that's their problem, not mine. How can you help people and get to a, get a good place if we can't work through the difficult, challenging things that all of us uh, human beings are going through. Women are going through it, men are going through it, young. But there is a positive, there's light at the end of the tunnel. You can overcome it, I've done it loads of times. And it's a great feeling and a great relief and satisfaction when, you, when you've when you got the courage to overcome it and not be frightened by the voice of fear. Because that's another lesson I've learned along the way. It's, basically not being frightened by an illusion, by something that doesn't actually physically exist, but psychologically it exists in your own mind, which can make it feel real in, in reality. But a lot of the fears, or if not all of them, they don't exist, but they will exist in our own minds and emotions and they will limit us if we don't face them and disprove them. So it's about disproving the voice wrong so whatever it tells you you can't do you go and do and you figure it out for yourself and that whole process is how you gain confidence that's how i did it in in any area by the way with, addi with addiction with business with making money with talk anything you know traveling i was tormented for years I, I couldn't do much i wouldn't travel i wouldn't go to restaurants i wouldn't meet new people i couldn't go on dates i couldn't sometimes speak properly, I couldn't walk down the street, I couldn't buy new clothes. I was so broken and afraid because I didn't know I could respond. I didn't, I didn't know I was more stronger in many ways than this voice and I was deeply ashamed and I was keeping it all a secret because of fear of um, consequences and, and public judgment until I thought, I'm, I'm not having, I, I'm, I had enough. I can't do this anymore. It's unbearable. And then my life became amazing. But the battle continues. I'm not gonna sit here and just, and then act like it's all done for me. No, I get it as well. I've got it right now as I'm doing this video. I can hear it telling me, shut up. Why are you doing this stuff? You did it before. Okay, you got some success. You're going, I'm not gonna listen to it. I'm not gonna have it. So that's my honesty, become fearless. 
but life becomes amazing when you've got the courage and most of it is opening up and then taking action, all right? So I'll see you in the next one. That's some education on how to get past that negative inner voice, which is making you go and watch porn or it's stopping you from going and meeting the girl of your dreams or being more social with your family. Basically, it tries to stop you being honest. Basically, it tries to stop you, stop me being a good person, being who I was meant to be, who God made me to be and who all of you are meant to be. And it's, it's, it's not, it ain't right. I always knew that as a kid. This ain't right, it's evil. I'm getting passionate, all right? I'll see you soon.